I wanted to give you an overview of the status of this uh, Project H Line 3D that I've been working on with Jameson for the past several months. The goal of this was to provide an easy to construct antenna and also some software which didn't require a whole lot of technical expertise to understand. And I think this has met the goal. And I have uploaded a lot of files on GitHub. You can find it there, or now you could use any of three search engines and just search for HLINE 3D and it comes up. And so the idea is this Yagi, and it's easy to build. You can build it with hand tools, except maybe an electric drill. The software produces files that are compatible with this Renier software, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's just fun to use. The information is really interesting. So let's see if I can do this. Hello. So this is the hardware. This is the latest version of this disk Yagi, and there are some major changes over what you have, may have seen before in that the first three elements, the reflector feed and first director have aluminum space between them and they are all electrically tied together. The backbone of this is no longer a stainless steel rod. Not that it's better, but it's lighter. And that allows you to use a $25 tripod to hold the thing because it only weighs a few ounces. And the rest of the spacers are non-metallic, they're picks. And this works really well. This is on the, the high point at the deck 20, the bright spot of the Milky Way. I'm getting about uh, 1.45 dB over cold sky. Pretty good signal of noise. And it's, like I said, it's fairly easy to build. And the software. Okay, the software is a derivative of some that has been used for a long time. SDR Sharp with Daniel Kaminsky's IF Average has been around for a while. And his software can be set up to automatically record a, a data set, text file data set, columns of frequency and amplitude. Jameson has written some software to pull in a whole subdirectory of these files and process them as a group. What it does, it brings in all the data files and, and these displays are also the graphics files that the software can show. So this is actually data using the Rainier and soft 2D software. So it brings in a whole set of data. You can see the original data. It'll compensate for the drift. An area is selected, which is not influenced by the, the hydrogen. And it norm, it, first it shows the drift over the entire two or 300 data points set, what the drift is over time. And it compensates for that. It subtracts them out. It does a power subtraction and it normalizes everything. Converts the amplitude to dB reference to cold sky and produces some really fun graphics. They're really interesting. And it's more than just fun in that there's a lot of information on a beginner's level that people can understand from this. You can see the LSR curve. It, it, it's, I overlaid this with a line, but you can see the background shape and you can get an idea of how the Every 12 hours, the earth rotates around and your antenna is pointing into towards or away from earth's rotation of 40 kilometers a second, at least on the equator. And you can, it produces some very nice graphics and you could see the various peaks corresponding to different levels of the Milky Way. And this is a part of the Cicera plot and there's good correlation. It, this really works very well. And so you can get an idea of the red and blue shifts as you're going across here. This is a lot of information for a high school or undergrad student to take in, but it's there and it's available. This is what I've uploaded to the repository. The first couple are related to a detailed fabrication of the antenna, step-by-step -step processes of installing the software and using the graphics. Well, installing the software for the SDR and IF average and then another one for the graphics processing. Also include a little Excel template, which will do the same thing to one set of data. It will normalize it to, you specify a range, it'll normalize that to zero and convert to DB reference to cold sky. I have the document which documents the past 10 months of this Yagi project. Another one, which is an expanded subset on NEC analysis of the antenna. And I also converted my three-year, my Eastern Conference 
that I presented three years ago on a PDF. And so this is the gra this is Jerry Taylor sent me this morning. So people are actually being able to use it. It works. So these are files from all of the files that Redian will produce. And it, the hardware has, has been modeled, it's validated, it says that it works. And the software, I think the key here is simplicity. People can understand what you're seeing here. And it's not an advanced level, but for some, a high school student science project or something of that level, it's, I think, highly effective. I'm going to pass on this. If there are any questions, then I'll turn it over to Jameson. Mr. Edcock. Hey, so I don't necessarily have a presentation to give other than I have been working with Alex on this for a while and I really appreciate, I've learned a lot. I didn't know decibel on the doorbells when I got started, but wanted to do a, a Java program that kind of did the stuff that I was doing in C. When I first got started and didn't know what I was doing, I knew there was a background drift and I wrote some code to correct for that. So it was a lot of fun working with Alex on this, especially the graphing in Rainier is, for lack of a better word, it's beautiful because I had been playing with Excel and I thought those graphs looked kind of cool despite some of Microsoft's limitations. But Rainier for an open source project is absolutely spectacular. The software, we're going to keep making some updates and modifications to it. The initial version that went out, we had the right Ascension stuff disabled because we thought there was a bug that I think we've tracked down. So that's enabled. We'll be able to do cool things like graph things by frequency, or you can change that to velocity based on the red shifts and blue shifts. You can determine just how fast different parts of the galaxy are moving. So that's where we're going with that. If you have bug requests, please, or bug, if you find a bug or a feature request that you have, just please let one of us know. And we're just going to keep working on it and adding features as we go. Some overall questions. The basic spectral processing is it FFT or scanning or an analog filter bank? That's just where this is. Bank. This uses an SDR, software defined radio. And so, within itself, it is doing conversion to uh, real imaginary components. And so, these are FFTs. How wide a band? About 1.4 megahertz. I mean, it's variable, but ah. it, it's kind of default sort of towards uh, H line. I use 512 channels. The software runs, the so it may go beyond it, but typically 250 to 1024 is about the right number. I, I like 512 and it works with that. So all of these IF average files are columns of frequency and, and the corresponding amplitude. And then it's converted to power and normalized. I'm still not sure what causes all this drift but it is disruptive to creating a nice flat background. So we smooth the background out and display it. And I think one of the key features is this Rainier and graphics in that for a younger person, it's reward for putting all this stuff together to getting a really fun plot that you can show people. A hardware side, your system temperature must be of the order of a hundred Kelvin. Is that correct? I don't know. Sander, I haven't evaluated this for the noise temperature, it probably is in that range. There were, I was trying to balance a lot of things. One of the things was to create an antenna that looks cool. The thing looks like a ray gun and something that could be put together. The initial ones I built in my machine shop. I have a metal lava bandsaw, a mill. It was a lot of, it was a work intensive effort to build these things. Jameson has one, there are six or seven that have been fielded but it's not something any person could do. And so the process over the past three or four months was to try to rebuild this, repackage this in a simple form, and it only weighs a few ounces and you can install it on a $25 photo mount and it won't tip over. And so it's a lot of balance. It, nothing is optimized. The optimization was putting together something inexpensive, something tested, lightweight, and with some nice software. Sure. But I, I, I just want to put all that together. Do you have any idea what the beam width of the antenna is? I mean, 30, about 30 degrees. Okay. And for the first amplifier, what do you use? It's a classic, no electric Sawbird LNA, H1 LNA. 
All right. Very right. good. Anyone else? Alex, are you doing in the post-processing any correction of the local standard of rest? No. In fact, I actually don't want to do that at this point, Wolfgang, because this is a learning opportunity to see this curve, I think, is good. At this point, I want people to, un to understand this thing rather than correct it. I want them to see all this. I think this is there's a lot of useful information that can be done here. Like I said, this may not, this isn't scientific level as you and many people are doing in a more research environment, but I think as a first tick introduction to radio astronomy, there is a huge amount of effort that can be knowledge that can be learned in this. Yeah. The caveat, if you do some looking at the rotation curve or something like that, you can't do without a correction because otherwise you're getting, yes, uh, strange results. Also, people have to be aware that if they repeat the experiment at a different point in time, they'll get a different results as far as velocities is, is concerned because of the different VLSR corrections. But that's so it's, all it's useful really learning. That's all useful learning for someone rather than erasing it out and make, giving it a flat line let them learn some of this stuff. I mean, maybe later on there could be a higher level, like an intermediate level, but for a baseline, this seems like a good way to present the material. Yeah. I think we've talked about some features like, you know, correcting for that. And we can always create more graphs, like create a graph that has, you know, that, the uh, wobble removed, but I sort of like seeing it because I can really see just how much the earth adds to the red shifts and blue shifts of the, the data that you get. Yeah, if you want to, obviously, if you want to correct it, you need to know where you are pointing. Yeah. So that has to be part of the data set then if you want to correct it. And people uh, near the equator will have a much greater sine wave than, than if you're up near the northern uh, Canada. <laughs> now, the, the majority of what you're seeing is rotation of That's the Earth around, right. uh, around the you're sun. Right. So the, the contribution from the Earth rotation is uh, fairly it's small fairly compared small, to that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, just one, one more question. I had a very a quick look at the description of the antenna. Is this just one, yeah, one, one PDF file? Because I couldn't find any dimensions in there. Oh, the first one lists everything. I mean, it's a step-by-step -step build and with the final dimensions. Look okay. at the first PDF. Yep. Okay. It shows, I mean, it shows you literally every dimension here and spacing and size. I don't have no, it. Maybe it must be a reference. Be. How long is it? How long is that pole? It all fits on a three foot long piece of dowel. It's 0.75 meters, three quarter meter length. Pretty so light. Under 56 yeah. inch diameter reflector. So it's something that's easy to carry. You know, a, a further step, much more complicated, but direction that someone could move into is the hardware is so simple or inexpensive, let's say, making an array, starting with two of these, doing some interferometry, and then expanding it, maybe getting 10 of them. Array technology is fine and could be a future direction. I'll let you work on that for me, Sam. Oh, we <laughs> are with the 10. <laughs> 2,000 <laughs> elements. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, that's the direction of that is really. Yeah. So and the difficulty that you will run into that is doing the correlation between the antennas. You need to have a multiple coherent input SDR or do some tricks. It's, I think that would be the tricky part, yeah. doing the yeah. multiple correlations. Software. <laughs> we'll do it. Okay. I think it's a great bit of work, guys, and I think you're really to be commended. I well, think thanks. you've got some super results, and the presentation and the detail that you've gone into it is absolutely mm -hmm. terrific. Yeah, I don't I have a wife. I do this all day long. <laughs> I'm looking forward to retirement so I can spend more time on stuff like this. But the kids are out of the house, and I'm retired. <laughs> I have, uh, okay. I have a, a question. 
maybe I missed the answer to this already, but what's the, how do you plan to market or distribute these things? You build it yourself. Plan? Build it yourself. Oh. Hell and do a Google or Bing search on HLine 3D, and it brings up all kinds of files. I mean, there's several hundred slides in that. So this is like the intent is for a, a student, high school, undergrad, college student to learn ast radio astronomy. And Alex has certainly been busy this week. I mean, you've gotten a lot of coverage, even getting onto the RTL SDR blog with this project. And you've been in touch with the Rainier developer who apparently is very excited about the fact that his software is being used for amateur radio astronomy. So I think we may hear more from him. I was very pleased at his response. He's in Japan and he speaks Japanese. In fact, he's talking about converting the GitHub information into Japanese. So that, that may have an interesting uh, progression. Yeah. And I'm actually, one of the features I'd like to add in a soonish release would be supporting multiple languages, which Java gives you some flexibility there. So it'd be great to use string resources so you can switch languages based on your locale, which I think would uh, make this very useful for people who don't speak English. All right. 